Hello students, welcome to the class of Business Studies. I am N.K. Tukral from Edupedia World. Students, in the previous sessions, I discussed on functions of staffing and staffing and HRM. I mean to say human resource management. Today I will be discussing on process of staffing. Let me tell you student that staffing is the third process of the planning and organizing. The aims of the organization is to reach on the predetermined goal and achieving the goals staffing is one of the important function. Without employees even machines and tools are ineffective. So now let us discuss on process or steps followed by the management in staffing. In brief I may tell you that function of staffing involves proper manpower, recruitment, selection, placement, training, development, promotions, transfer, appraisal of personnel and fixing their remuneration. These are all essential steps involved in process of staffing function. To start with, beginning step is to forecast manpower requirement or manpower planning. What is manpower planning? Students, you must be aware manpower requirement is always there in every kind of organization. So what exactly is what we can refer to it? Manpower planning is referred to the quantitative and qualitative measurement of labor force required in an organization. So quantity as well as quality both are required for the labor force which requires in an organization. First of all analyzing the requirement that is what is the number of requirement and second the type of requirement. So this is number one step we need to know. Always one need to evaluate the need of manpower inventory. So manpower requirement involves two steps. Number one workload analysis and number two workforce analysis. Workload and workforce both are required and on analyzing it is known whether the organization is understaffed or overstaffed or maybe it is optimal, optimally staffed. Decision is taken after that whether to remove the staff or add the staff or transfer the staff wherever required in other branches of the business. So number one step is required here to determine the number and types of employees required and to make policies for appointment of women, persons from backward and special abilities. This also comes under estimating the manpower requirement. Another is manpower requirement to be translated into specific job description and profile. You see once we know the number of manpower required we have to translate it into what is the job description and what is the profile required and to do workload analysis and to do workforce analysis. Let me repeat what is workload analysis. It involves determining number and types of human resources required to perform various jobs and to achieve organizational objectives. And what is workforce analysis? It shows the number and types of human resources available with the organizations. So these are the steps involved in estimating manpower requirement. However, I may tell you the objectives of estimating the manpower requirement. What is the objective? Number one objective is to determine the number and types of employees required. Type refers to means specific qualification, skills or experience to be possessed, possessed by the particular employee. And another objective is that while assessing the type of manpower requirement, companies should also make policies to appoint women, persons from backward community and persons with special abilities. Manpower requirement should be translated into specific job description and the desirable profile its occupant. So these are the all steps required and one must know that what needs to be there in the estimating manpower requirement. Since I told you that there should not be overstuffing as well as understaffing, always there should be optimal staffing in any type of organization, maybe a small one or maybe a large one. What is overstuffing? What is the result of overstuffing? It is an undesirable situation at what it leads to more pay and less work. So every company needs proper estimation of manpower 
requirement. After estimating manpower requirement, the next step in staffing process is recruitment. Now, recruitment students, what is recruitment? Everybody must be aware this is a very simple thing. Once the requirements are notified, the concern or organization invites and solicits applications according to the invitation made to the desirable candidate. The searching of competent candidate and informing him about the opening in the organization and thereafter providing him the procedure or process he has to follow if he is interested. So whenever there is a vacancy in the organization, generally it is to be filled up. To make the candidates available and filling vacancies, their selection process and placement on a proper job covers under the preview of recruitment. Now, what you can say define how you can define recruitment. I use you can see in the slide process of searching for prospective employees and encouraging them to apply for the job in the company. So, what is recruitment? It is a process of searching of prospective employees, number one, and then call them and encourage them or through email you can encourage them that vacancy is there in the organization you can apply them after knowing the their profile and thereafter telling them the process how you have to apply in the company so this is what recruitment is now what are the function of recruitment number one function is process of writing job description so the information generated in the process of writing the job description and the candidate profile may be used for developing the situation's vacant advertisements. However, the organization what they may feel they may give advertisement in the local newspaper and can uh, display the details on the office gate or in case of a small organization or a labor oriented organization and the language may be in Hindi or English or local language. So all this is required up what we can say process of writing job description. Another function is locating the potential candidates. You see this tops is also very important and involves locating the potential candidate or determining the sources of potential candidate. There may be consultant in this field in the market or locally offices where they can generate the potential candidate because they know the qualification or biodata etc profile etc of the required candidate so organization can contact them by locating the potential candidates another function is to create a pool of applicants what is the objective of recruitment is to create a pool of applicants by large number of qualified candidates so i mean to say candidates must qualify the criteria of the job Another function is internal as well or external sources to be used for recruitment. Both are the sources which can be used for recruitment purpose. So this function is also you can say either uh, internal sources means it is either maybe a promotion or transfer of the candidate or external source means placement consultant, campus recruitment etc etc. So nowadays I can see that in the large organizations the campus recruitment has become a state of affair at the presently. Earlier internal sources were to be used first because availability is there in the other branches of the business you can have the candidate if he fits into that job and external sources as I have told you that campus recruitment is the best source nowadays to fill the vacancies in the organization. As I may tell you that there are large MNCs are growing up in our country, so internal sources may give the organization a limited choice, whereas the external sources give wider choice and fresh talent. So these sources are very important for to fulfilling the job as per the requirement of the organization. Now let's go ahead, students. The next step in staffing process is selection. What is selection? This is the screening step of staffing in which the solicited applications are screened out and suitable candidates are appointed as per the requirement. So selection what it involves choosing the best person out of the pool of prospective candidates developed through recruitment. As in case of external sources told you further in case of recruitment when the campus interview is there 
there the sources are too many too many candidates are fresh talent are there so organization can choose out of the pool first can make the pool then out of the pool then the candidates can be placed or can be selected so what exactly it the def, how you can define the selection selection involves choosing the best person out of the pool of prospective candidates developed through recruitment as you can see in the slide what it involves number one it involves screening i mean to say step like preliminary screening tests etc another is to offer the job to applicants meeting the criteria of the what is required by the organization and another one is to meet the objectives of the organization so these are the processes involved in the selection selection process is conducted to serve two basically objectives to choose the most suitable candidates out of the pool and to enhance self esteem of selected candidates and to make him realize the seriousness with which things are done in the organization before coming to the next step in this step of selection i must tell you that under the process of selection better applicants are selected out of a large number of them it may be pool either internal sources or external sources it must be kept in mind that the ability of the applicant and the nature of work must match so these are the two important things students that ability of the applicant and nature of the work both should match it means that right man should be selected for the right job this will lead to better performance on all fronts that is quality quantity time and cost etc so basically what are the steps required in selection preliminary screening selection test employment interview references and background checks or verification you can say selection decision medical examination job offer and contact of employment these are all the processes in case of selection so now let's go ahead students next step in case of staffing process is placement and orientation what is placement and what is orientation i must tell you that placement means assigning specific jobs to the candidates and orientation means process of introducing new employees to the organization and to make them familiarize familiarize so these are the placement and orientation placement involves putting the selected man at the right place considering his aptitude and ability it is the actual posting of an employee to a particular job for which he or she has been chosen whereas in case of orientation orientation is known as induction it means introducing the newly selected employee that is to various facet of the company his job other job nature of product policies rules and existing employees etc what is the objective objective is of induction is that new employee into the organization must work very smoothly so placement refers to assigning specific job to the candidate selected for the appointment orientation refers to process of introducing new employees to the organization the basic objective is to make them familiarize or make them familiarize the new employees to the organization so that he can adjust in the work environment so orientation is very much important in any case of organization sometime in the small organization even they may not be benefited the employee may not benefit the organization since he doesn't know what needs to be done or the climate or the environment doesn't suit to him so first in the orientation in case of after placement orientation is very much required and now, now a big large big houses they are well taking time either one week or 15 days induction training program so that all the employees must know the organization what it is what is the management what management wants from them etc etc so orientation is orientation is as important as in case of placement so after placement and orientation the another next step is training and development the term training implies a systematic procedure of imparting knowledge and skills for a specific job you see when a candidate is selected he must be trained and what about knowledge and about his 
her skill. So it's the systematic procedure. Process is made by the or the organization at how to train and how to develop a candidates. What how it benefits? You see, training and development. If there is there, it benefits both the enterprise or you can say organization as well as employee. Training increases the skills and abilities of employees to perform a specific job. Training can be given for improving the current job or to prepare the employees for some intended job. The enterprise also gets the advantage of training in the form of reduction in the production cost, best uses of tools and machines and improvement in the quality etc. So this is a result of better training if organization gives. So this step involves improving the job knowledge and competence of employees in order to enable them to perform their job efficiently. Always training and development motivates the employees to contribute more to the organization effectiveness as well as efficiency. Another step is performance appraisal. You see what is form what is this in this step what it involves the capability of the employee is judged and for that his actual performance is compared with the work assigned to him or her. If the results are unfavorable he is again given training and after that also if the results are again unfavorable the employee is put on some other type of job where he or she may be best suited. So performance appraisal what it refers to you can say a systematic evaluation of employees performance against predetermined standards and their potential for development. The process of performance appraisal will include defining the job, appraising performance and providing feedback. Practically all type of organizations have the performance appraisal nowadays because ultimately it reduces the production cost also it train the employee so that objectives are well achieved another one is step is promotion and career planning why promotions are there what for because it encourages the employee to grow and realize their full potential it becomes necessary for all the organization to address career related issues and promotional avenues to serve employees long term interest. So what promotion is? It refers to the advancement of an employee in the management hierarchy. Promotion is generally accompanied by greater job responsibilities, more pay, higher status and greater prestige. So it is a process through which employees get better salary, status, position, more responsibilities also. In this step, employees earn their promotion to higher post as on the basis of their performance. After promotion and career planning, next step is compensation. You see, compensation means the financial benefits or remuneration you can say. You see, remuneration or compensation is very much important nowadays in all case of organization. As maximum organization, they achieve the objectives if an employee or a potential employee or a good employee always if he is on a sitting in the organization for a long term because long term achievement of goals needs to be needs to be gained by the organization if long term goals are not there the the employee may not stick to the organization so financial benefits play an important role in attracting and retaining a competent group of employees so manager should develop a sound compensation policy so what exactly compensation is it refers to all forms of pay or rewards given to the employees but i may tell you that the fixation of remuneration or compensation is not very much easy for the organization fixation is the most fixation of remuneration is the most difficult and complex function of the personal department because there are no definite or exact means to determine the correct salaries or wages. Job evaluation is the only systematic technique to determine the worth of the job, but much remains to be done in this regard. As wages constitute major part of the cost of production, every concern or organization must consider this aspect very seriously. And further, compensation may be in the form of either direct financial payments or indirect payments. 
what is direct or which is indirect direct payments means is it like in cash or wages salaries incentives or commissions these are paid in cash so they are they are called direct financial payments either the in case of labor oriented organization it is in basis on daily weekly or monthly basis wages and what is indirect payments it can be in the form of either providing furnished free home or free car etc for traveling or any other like of packages where cash is not there but reimbursement is there or company or organizations on behalf of employee in incurring expenditure on him that is called indirect payments certain pay plans can be created which are a combination of time based pay plus incentives managers may formulate various plans of compensation but all of them should be adequate and equitable so these are all the steps involved in staffing process so students what we have discussed today in case of staffing process is a manpower planning recruitment selection placement training development promotion and appraisal and determination of remuneration all of these steps are involved in case of any type of organization so let's wind up today for the class next in the next class on the next session we will go in detail about each step of staffing process so thank you bye bye okay